thank you, Tim. Uh, I uh, used these few minutes to calm down, but I was also very stressed out why it didn't work and what has happened because usually teams work well on my computer, but sometimes technology beats us and <laughs> chooses a day to do so. Um, uh, I also would like to thank you for chairing this panel to the University of St. Andrews to, for organizing a series of talks on the on the Balkans and um, and then to Peter and Kurt for their excellent interventions. It is I listen to them carefully. It is very difficult for me to say anything new, so I will be uh, repetitive, but uh, perhaps with uh, um, with a slightly different uh, angle. Uh, and then also try to be forward looking, something that um, Kurt said is is lacking in the usual discourse um, or discussion of Bosnia-Herzegovina. Uh, the uh, Dayton Peace Agreement, uh, well, we just marked 25 years since, uh, since it was um, uh, brought. Um, one of the main characteristics uh, or the main benefit of the agreement is the peace that it has created. Uh, but looking at the events, especially the regression in the last few years, the uh, spoiler, spoilers or external actors who are intervening in this country, I think the ability of Dayton to keep peace or preserve peace is actually being reduced. And um, I think we may even lose if we don't act or if we don't uh, change the course of events or the trajectory, we may actually even lose peace that we have uh, managed to um, build uh, or build on in the last uh, quarter of the century. It certainly has not been, as uh, Peter very well explained, it hasn't been built to uh, create a functional democracy. It simply stopped the war and we have been trying to build a functional democracy from a peace agreement that was a reflection of basically the situation on the ground uh, 25 years ago with some notions of how the country could function based on the experience of Yugoslavia or some other um, multi-ethnic societies and what it would need in the future, but certainly not a comprehensive document. Um, in this sense, um, uh, Kurt is right, he showed how the international community uh, acted and uh, I think as much as they are still but deducing hopes among the people in Bosnia-Herzegovina that um, there will be someone coming from the outside, a savior, to, uh, to decide on the future of the country. It, uh, it will not happen. Uh, but citizens of Bosnia-Herzegovina have to decide where their future lies. I remember as a vice president when Mr. Biden visited uh, Bosnia and he sat with a tripartite presidency and then in um, while talking to them, they, they asked him, like, what, do you, what does the United States um, uh, want with Bosnia? What are your plans? And he said, well, I don't know, <laughs> please tell me um, what are your what are your plans for Bosnia-Herzegovina? And I think this hasn't changed, uh, but uh, probably the echo or the resonance, the understanding among people in Bosnia-Herzegovina is stronger, one, one would hope. There is this um, alternative or parallel trend of people leaving the country, which is not beneficial for any discussion on who are going to be the actors or who is going to lead the change in Bosnia-Herzegovina. So we are actually fighting the time if um, if we want to do something. And when I say we, I mean the willing international community as well as or primarily the citizens in the country. They haven't been heard so far. They now in the last local elections basically said no, at least in some locations, to the ethno-nationalist elites, but uh, this hasn't happened for the first time. We have had uh, windows of opportunity in the past, but they haven't been uh, scaled up. They haven't meant, they haven't led to um, a comprehensive change. Uh, 25 years uh, is enough to tell, to simply conclude that the Dayton Peace Agreement cannot uh, be a basis for a stable and functional state. And I think this is the first um, message or the first lesson that we need to get in, in among 
Palestinian citizens, because we still and now I just left another conference on organizing Sarajevo on date on uh, 25 and now we have a series of conferences and actually I'm surprised to hear that many participants use their time to discuss the deficiencies of Dayton and the, why the Bo Bosnia is dysfunctional and uh, what are problems and how it was created and uh, how did the night before the peace agreement was adopted looked like and so on and so on. But I think we shouldn't lose time on this anymore. I think we really should conclude and have uh, basically a uh, um, um, civic block or, or um, broad civic discussion uh, that this cannot, this this document cannot be upgraded. It simply is uh, fault uh, 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 um, with uh, it's it, it's um, uh, wrought with uh, deficiencies or limitations. And uh, we should basically thank him for what it brought, but that now we need we need a new uh, start uh, because losing more time on trying to upgrade Dayton or, or have some cosmetic uh, changes uh, is uh, just going to, um, I think, diffuse that little uh, positive energy that we have uh, in the country and in the international environment, and it will absorb basically uh, use our resources for no um, uh, long term uh, stable goal. So the first step in this civic mobilization should be, I think, uh, a broad uh, discussion, a broad uh, fieldwork and, uh, and contacts with people on the ground. Uh, which we have, uh, at least uh, three of us who are in this panel uh, participated in a couple of projects in the course of the last year, despite the pandemic, and have been in the field in Bosnia Herzegovina. And wherever you go, people are dissatisfied. Even people who uh, work, who are basically part of the of the establishment, people who work in government or at any level, um, people who live quite well compared to uh, some other of their fellow citizens are uh, dissatisfied. The emigration from Bosnia Herzegovina is not only by people who don't have jobs, people who have jobs, who have uh, who own houses or apartments, they leave, not because they are economically uh, challenged or deprived, but because they don't want their children to live in this country or they want different future for their children. So challenges are uh, many and um, the um, if we have the um, um, capacity to uh, drive this uh, civic mobilization uh, in the course of the next one year or, or uh, uh, 18 months and uh, and have some sort of a poll or referendum or, or a way for people to express uh, uh, their um, um, belief, whether they think uh, I'm not prescribing anything. I'm not saying that people should say this or that, but this level of dissatisfaction, in the, in dissatisfaction indicates that people are um, willing to say that this doesn't work. But let's let's check the, let's check this. Let's have this be the first um, uh, checkpoint uh, in uh, in planning or preparing for for future uh, steps. At the same time, another myth that needs to be debusted is that there is no alternative because we hear we have to we are stuck with Dayton because there is no alternative. Constituent peoples, this is something that has to stay as a, a category or is a um, building block of, of uh, Bosnia Herzegovina as a state and and some other uh, instruments that were designed in Dayton, but um, the alternatives do exist. It's only that people are either not uh, car uh, um, uh, brave enough, or that people are not, you know, uh, imagine uh, uh, that don't have enough imagination, or are not willing to invest in themselves in thinking of a future or other proposal, alternative visions for Bosnia Herzegovina. One of them. Um, sees Bosnia Herzegovina as a um, small state with uh, three million people, just just over three million people or less. It's like a large city in in Europe, 
uh, and it has 14 governments and this very, very, very complicated structure. Over 60% of the budget goes just to supporting the um, administration. If you can design a simpler system, a system that works better for citizens, uh, Bosnia uh, would, and the system that where institutions do function so that we have investments also and uh, economic development, I'm certain that in relatively short time, Bosnia can drive up its economic development and become and actually increase the, the um, uh, uh, welfare of its, of its citizens. It doesn't have to be poor. It is rich in resources. It doesn't have external assistance and international aid to be sustained. It can pay for its own cost, but this cost has to be much more rational. It, and it has to be, the investment has to be uh, in, the, in the interest of citizens. Um, you can ask me or we can discuss later on uh, how uh, how we could uh, organize this uh, referendum of uh, people's will, but I think uh, it is also important not only as a first step, as I said, in understanding what people want and what they are capable of taking on, but it's also important in a, a psychological sense. Bosnia is collectively traumatized society. And when you go to, to the field and you talk to people, you realize this. People simply want to talk and nobody listens to them. Just just uh, uh, um, um, a plan or uh, organized uh, effort to have people uh, heard, that they understand that they are asked uh, something that they have responsibility for their country, that their voice will actually matter or whatever they decide, and that they actually need to uh, take responsibility and decide for themselves rather than delegate responsibility to somebody else is, is uh, uh, empowering and um, is almost um, emancipatory uh, for, uh, for these citizens. Uh, on the um, positive side, I think progress, uh, although we say a lot of depressing things about Bosnia-Herzegovina, I think Bosnia has a lot of potentials to show that uh, progress is possible. It is easier to do it in a small European country with relatively well-educated population, with relatively well-connected um, um, people and country to the, to, uh, the rest of Europe. Uh, than somewhere else. I think the European Union needs this uh, success. I think Europe needs this uh, success. And um, uh, for all the other elements that we can bring into discussion, this uh, different religions or, or um, different ethnicities and the post-war um, narrative and so on and so on, Bosnia can also prove to be a good example for, for others. And I think we shouldn't lose this opportunity in, in uh, grasping this um, um, possibility. I also would like just as a, as a citizen to thank, basically, I mean, this is a small forum, but still, I mean, listening to Peter and Kurt and, uh, and then others, uh, all of you who, who take interest, I think it's actually amazing that uh, for such a small country to get and, and to continue to get continuous uh, international attention. And uh, this is also something to, uh, that speaks for, uh, you know, the potential that we actually get something good about it, that we change the um, trajectory and that we start speaking actually and discussing Bosnia in forward looking terms uh, first, and then hopefully in discussing some successes that we can get there. This is my intervention for the start. Thank you.